Take a trip through the deadliest plants in the world to learn about the world's most deadly plants and how they affect people in amazing ways. Number one, a leafy beginning. Once upon a time, in a world far, far away from the safety of your local flower shop, a place where even the daisies have an attitude, there existed plants so deadly, they made poison ivy look like a bed of roses. Our journey begins in the enigmatic and slightly overdramatic Amazon rainforest, a place teeming with flora and fauna that are all members of the How to Kill a Human Club. Here, the plants don't just sit there looking pretty, they're plotting. Take, for instance, the notorious Oops, I accidentally touched it vine. Brush against its leaves, and you're in for a surprise that'll have you itching for weeks. It's like attending a family reunion, unpleasant and seemingly never ending. Then there's the bite me and regret it berry, a fruit so cunningly toxic. One nibble and you're hallucinating worse than a teenager at a music festival. Imagine seeing your mother-in-law's face in every tree, truly terrifying. And let's not forget the I dare you to smell me flower. Its fragrance is so potent, it's like being trapped in an elevator with someone who's over-enthusiastic about their new perfume. One whiff and your nose hairs are singed, leaving you gasping for air like a fish out of water. So there you have it, a whimsical warning about the deadly greenery in a world where plants are not just photosynthesizing, but also fantasizing about their next victim. Welcome to the jungle, folks. It's wilder than your aunt's 80th birthday party. Number two, the Amazonian assassins. In the dense, uncharted depths of the Amazon, where even the mosquitoes wear armor, there resides a plant with a reputation darker than your grandma's burnt toast. They call it the mother-in-law's tongue, but its real moniker is Diefenbachia, a name so complex you might sprain your tongue trying to pronounce it. And speaking of tongues, this plant has a way with them. You see, Diefenbachia doesn't exactly send you to the pearly gates. It prefers a more theatrical approach. Take a bite though why you'd want to is a mystery greater than why cats hate water. And your tongue balloons up like it's been hit with an air pump by a zealous clown. Suddenly, it's so large, it could apply for its own zip code. Trying to talk becomes as futile as trying to teach a goldfish to moonwalk. The swelling is so impressive that speech becomes a long lost dream. A silent movie with no subtitles. It's an experience some husbands in the vicinity might secretly toast to imagining a world of peaceful Sunday afternoons. But beware, for while your tongue is on its unsolicited vacation, you're left navigating a world where the only way to express past the salt is through interpretive dance. Truly Diefenbachia offers a unique way to taste silence, quite literally. Number three, the desert's deadly delight. The arid deserts of Mexico, where the sun is hot, the tacos are spicy, and the peyote cactus reigns supreme. This little plant might look as harmless as a bald hedgehog, but don't let its appearance fool you. It's spineless, sure, reminding me uncannily of my ex who couldn't even face the pizza delivery guy, but it packs a punch with its hallucinogenic powers. Now, if you're brave, or perhaps just lacking common sense, and you decide to nibble on this cactus, prepare for a trip that's more outlandish than your aunt's hat collection. You'll start seeing things that aren't there, dancing coyotes, singing cacti, or maybe even your chances of becoming a millionaire. But here's the kicker. While you're busy chatting with imaginary desert wildlife, your sense of reality decides to take a vacation. And how does this lead to your untimely demise, you ask? Well, you might find yourself confidently strolling into a chasm, convinced it's a newly discovered portal to Narnia, or attempting to swim in a mirage of a sparkling oasis. In the end, the peyote cactus doesn't just blur the lines between reality and fantasy, it erases them completely, sending you on a one-way trip to the great beyond, with a detour through the land of ludicrous hallucinations. So remember, when in the Mexican desert, admire the peyote from a distance, or better yet, stick to the tacos. They're a safer bet. Number four, Australia's angry algae. Australia, the land down under where the wildlife is outlandish, and the plants are practically prehistoric in their pugnacity. Enter the Jimpy Jimpy, also known as the stinging brush, a plant so sneaky, it makes ninjas look conspicuous. This unassuming, innocent looking leaf is like the sheep in wolf's clothing of the plant kingdom. Don't let its mundane appearance fool you. It's armed to the leaves with tiny hair-like needles. These needles, upon the slightest touch, act like nature's own syringes of sorrow, injecting a toxin that brings a world of pain. 
Imagine being burnt with the hottest acid while simultaneously receiving an enthusiastic electric shock. That's the Jimpy Jimpy specialty. It's the kind of pain that makes you question all your life choices leading up to that moment. And just when you think it's over, the pain lingers like an awkward guest who doesn't get the hint to leave. It's a pain so intense that even hardened Australian wildlife whisper about it around the campfire. In the world of deadly plants, the Jimpy Jimpy is the stuff of legends. A leafy green grim reaper waiting to unleash a botanical beatdown. So, in the words of the wise, if you're gallivanting through the Australian wilderness and see a plant that looks as harmless as a kitten, think twice. It might just be the infamous Jimpy Jimpy, ready to give you a stinging reminder of your visit down under. Number five, the killer in your garden. Now, let's amble over to the most treacherous part of your home sweet home, the backyard. Amidst the gnome statues and lawn flamingos, lurks a plant so devious it could have its own crime show. Meet the oleander, the unassuming floral fiend you probably bought on a whim at Ikea, attracted by its pretty petals and the challenge of pronouncing its name. Don't let its beauty fool you. Every leaf, stem, and bloom of this suburban seductress is laced with toxins. Picture this. You're enjoying a sunny day. You casually nibble on an oleander leaf, as one does, and bam. You're on a one-way, all-expenses-paid trip to the ER. With hallucinations so vivid, you'd swear you're the star of a psychedelic rock opera. What happens next? Oh, just a smorgasbord of symptoms. Stomach cramps that feel like an alien's about to burst out. Heart palpitations doing the cha-cha, and dizziness that could rival the best tequila. In a dramatic finale, if not treated, the oleander's toxins can tell your heart to take a permanent vacation. So next time you're at Ikea, maybe stick to meatballs and skip the killer plants aisle. Number six, the castor bean catastrophe. The castor bean plant, the unassuming star of our how to meet your maker in the most dramatic way possible show. This plant, folks, is no ordinary beanstalk. It's like the plant world's version of a spy, unremarkable on the outside, deadly on the inside. The castor bean is the proud producer of castor oil, the substance that haunted many childhoods with its ghastly taste. But hold on to your hats, because the real party trick of this plant is its production of ricin, a poison so potent that just one bean can turn you into a ghost. Now, how does this tiny bean pack such a deadly punch? Imagine you're at a party. Ricin is the uninvited guest that crashes in, wreaks havoc on your body's essential functions, and then slips away, leaving chaos in its wake. It's like a molecular ninja, disrupting your body's protein-making machinery. It's so effective that it's earned a spot in the arsenal of classic spy and mystery novels. Eating one of these beans is the equivalent of playing the world's worst lottery, and spoiler alert, you won't win. The symptoms? They're a roller coaster ride of nausea, internal upheaval, and a finale that's less fireworks and more, well, let's just say it's not pleasant. So next time you're considering a snack, maybe skip the castor beans. Because honestly, who wants their last words to be, I thought it was just a bean? Congratulations. You've survived the deadliest plants in the world. You're now equipped with enough knowledge to be paranoid about every plant you encounter. Remember, in the world of plants, beauty is skin deep, but poison goes all the way to the root.